All right, feel free to get started whenever anyone, everyone's here and ready. Good luck, everyone. Yes, yeah, so this is being live streamed to YouTube so everybody can watch it. Are we still waiting or should I get ready to perform? Or may I get ready to perform? Uh, all the judges are here. There was a contestant whose first name starts with a Y who is not here. Uh, it could be a double entry that wasn't noted on my ballot. So feel free to start anytime. Okay. In debate class, she aimed for my heart. Loaded mouth, cock tongue, she fired. Whitewash? What do you know about being woke? On the left, woke was a positive term. A person who was awake of social injustices and discrimination, an ally for the oppressed. On the right, woke was hijacked. A pejorative term, a person who was comfortable with offensiveness, silenced from speech, sought injustice where it didn't exist. I want to talk to those of you today who are woke and who are open to rational argument. So let me make one. We are told that our generation cares more than any other about one issue, climate change, and you wish to save the planet. So for tonight only, I will worship at the feet of St. Greta of climate change. I will join you. So I ask you, what can we do? I cowered in class like I always do. No business to attend to here. No agency to attend to this business. No common sense to voice. No sense to have a voice so common. I must be sleeping. But I am awake. In January, the Oxford Union in, in England held a debate on wokeness. Comedian and political commentator Constantine Kisson guest spoke and challenged the prevailing views of wokeness and anti-wokeness on campus by suggesting discourse for post-woke via climate change. In a follow-up interview with Great Britain News, he argued, we are in a woke renaissance where former woke ideologies are still incentivizing structures where it is preferable to be a victim and wallow in it while being anti-woke allows supporters to pose as innocent victims. However, in knowing that these ideologies can inadvertently govern societies by sharpening the public's moral purpose and galvanizing voters, it is imperative to understand whether woke discourse has gone too far. Through the poetry, Yield the Floor by James Thomas, and In the Days of Post-Woke, you can still enjoy your M&Ms by Lindsay Ray. The Prose, A History of Wokeness by Asia Romano, and The Drama, A Unified Theory of Wokeness by Bill Maher, and This House Believes Woke Culture Has Gone Too Far by Constantine Kisson and Toby Young a program analyzing whether the rhetoric of post-woke reform is enough to champion a cultural renaissance. We can only do one thing about climate change. Now keep in mind, Britain makes up 2% of global carbon emissions, which means that if Britain were to sink into the sea right now, it would make absolutely no difference because the future of the climate is going to be decided in places like Asia and Latin America by poor people who couldn't give a shit about saving the planet because they're poor. 
In Russia, which is not a poor country, 20% of households don't have an indoor toilet, they have an outdoor toilet, a wooden shack with a hole in the ground, a collected fermented memory of the last 10,000 visits. How many of you are going to go home tonight, rip out your bathroom, and erect a Siberian shithouse in the back garden? And if you're not, why should they? In the days of woke, victimization seemed so subtle. Not me became me too. Take a knee, but wanted an arm too. Played wolf that cried cancel culture. Needed safe spaces, but always secure enough to speak out. Whitewash, what do you know about being woke? Cock dung click. Student sprint, she reloads, she fires. Wake up! Woke ain't over, bitch. And suddenly, I'm like Julia Stiles in Save the Last Dance, but in Technicolor. Only I know how woke started, bitch. So I fire back. Who made you the woke authority on my place in the conversation? I contemplate recalling that rebuttal, but I like the sensation when my allyship refuses to react to her accusations of appropriation. I'm Kevlar in the same progressive education after endless slurs about my own pigmentation, after years learning about woke segregation, I'm done tiptoeing around antiquated arguments and reformist provocations. Sick of being the money shot for her mental masturbation. Why is another person of color perpetuating such cultural denigration, torn between the authority or the audacity to even defend it? Make worthy this debate in attempt to amend it. Stir the Congress of my voices chambers. But I wouldn't recommend it. In the days of anti-woke, the innocent victims seemed so subtle. They bemoaned M&Ms who would not stop until every character was totally androgynous. The antis were so evolved, so righteous, so starving for attention that even fucker Carlson still eats his less sexy M&Ms. DeSantis' Stop Woke Act tried to get order a race theory. Utter a pronoun, say gay. Is it really that hard? It's like three letters. Whitney Cummings clapped back at Nicki Minaj when she whined that men don't respect her in the rap game because she's a woman. No, honey, we don't respect you because we can see your asshole. In post-woke, if you told me in the face of a climate emergency that I had a choice, Either my son had a serious risk of starving or dying from a preventable disease in the next year, or I could press a button. And he would live. He would go to school, graduate, become a woke idiot, get a job, get married, have children. But all I have to do is press this button. And for every day of my son's life, a giant plume of CO2 is going to get released into that atmosphere? Though most of you are not parents, let me tell you something. There is not a parent in this world who would not smash that button so hard that their hand bled. I bled out, holding my heart to the sky, tossed her a souvenir still beating with pride, how remarkable that I'm still here as I cock down click, put my weapon to her ear. You are not a fucking victim. That is an ideology when you're cult to your own system. My heart stuck in my own throat. I couldn't say any of it. Too deafened by your own ammunition. So forget it. So much easier to yield the floor that day. Safer to be the quiet and sleepy girl with nothing woke to say.
Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing we can do to stop climate change is to create technological and scientific breakthroughs that will create energy that is cheap and clean. Not throw soup at paintings, protest, complain. And the problem with victimization in woke culture is that it has trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Remember, sometimes the troubles of the temple are the priests themselves. And despite my own glass house, I dare to throw stones. Reform can be an ugly word, but the objection to wokeness and anti-wokeness is not the end, but the means used to achieve it. Thank you. If my fellow judges can follow suit and just type in that you're set, it would help me out. Okay, looks like everyone has chimed in. So we're ready for Callum. All right, are you all able to hear and see me okay? Yes, sir. Awesome. I came out as a gay man a few years ago, and I thought that I could finally find some comfort and acceptance in my community. But it did not take me long to realize how toxic the culture of body shaming was. You know, I am 5'10", 200 pounds, not exactly a cow, not really obese. I suppose if I had to describe myself, it'd be like a younger cup version of Jack Black. And I mean, would you call him fat? Probably not. So anyways, I joined this gym in Chicago around six months ago. One of the chain gyms that are just really popular in the area. Girl, there was this one guy there that I am the first to admit that I found attractive. So I have received a lot of questions asking me to define the scientifically accurate gay terminology and phylums for the whole gay animal kingdom. So without any further ado, I present to you the gay classification kingdom. The world looks at fat boy like he is an exhibit at the zoo. Their eyes and voices place pressure on him to change. Pressure to shrink up 32 inch waist, skin so tight around muscles creates mountain ranges across my body. They pressure fat boy to starve himself to the brink of his existence. All in the name of health. The ideal male body type has made authentic living in the queer community as a fat individual near impossible. A 2020 study from the Archives of Sexual Behavior on Fat Phobia states that when the ideal male body type made by society is then placed onto the queer community, we face heavier struggles of body image that too often correlate with the higher risk of misusing substances like drugs, laxatives, alcohol, and appetite suppressants, as well as an increased risk of obsessive exercising and eating disorders in hopes of not only finding ourselves with the perfect body, but hiding the shame we feel because of our current one. 
over time, these feelings of shame manifest themselves within us. And as we internalize them, we feel like we are not worth being loved by ourselves or others due to our size. Furthermore, they are only compounded through popular hookup apps like Grindr, where individuals are perfectly free to label their prejudice as preference. So in this program, I will start to disassemble the prejudice within the queer community to make way for more. That beauty. So with the pros, I was fat shamed by a giant gay jock at my gym by Chicago Bruce, fat phobia in the gay dating community by Baxter Blaze, the poetry Fat Boy by Jackson Richards, and to the fat men that survived society by Nathan3259, the drama Gay Classification Kingdom by Adventures and Gay, and articles from The Vice and The Daily Beast. A program. Because my fat body does not mean that I have any less to love. It means I have more. Part of the reason I joined the gym was, yes, to get in better shape, but also to just socialize a little bit. So when I saw him, I was immediately compelled to make my presence known. But girl, this man had me nervous. You know, he was one of the guys that just walks by and people just stop and stare. Like a older Taylor Lautner. So one day when we were changing in the gym and he was about three doors down, I was like, why not? And I started making small talk. So first up, we've got Twinks. Twinks are gay guys who are slim, young, generally hairless, and have boyish features. A chicken hawk is an older gay man that preys on younger gay men. An owl is a gay guy who... Who? Who? A Gandalf is the gay guy that refuses to bottom. Thou shall not ask. And a gay guy that's closed on Sunday is a post orifice. Okay, you'll get that one tomorrow. But next, we've got bears. Bears are gay guys who are big, musty, beefy, and have a lot of body hair. I remember being called fat on the playground at school and how he said it with such venom as if it was supposed to offend me. But facts aren't supposed to offend you, like how a tree really did fall that day or how fat men are only seen if we are funny. A forest cut down for comedic relief. So that's why for years after the fact, I still remember the first time I was called. That boy has the pressure of his weight crushing him. His weight, the expectations and burdens of three people in one. Society says that thick thighs save lives in public, but the fat boy say how thick thighs will end his. We chatted for a few minutes and I found out that we actually have some things in common. Like we are both originally from Michigan, we're both fans of the Chicago Cubs, and fun fact, we have the same favorite third baseman, Chris Bryant. <laughs> so, this fall, when the Cubs were on a winning streak, I decided to ask him if he wanted to catch a game. I happened to be tunneled into a ticket source that was reliable, and when I asked if he wanted to go, he said, sure, but put a caveat on that saying that he needed to check his schedule. I remember my dad telling me that if I wasn't so lazy, that I wouldn't be so fat. And I remembered it every day that I cooked his dinner, after coming home from school, after feeding all of the animals on our farm, after watering all of the plants in our garden, I remembered how maybe I wouldn't be so fat if I just worked harder. If I just wasn't so lazy, so fat boy goes to walk. Fat boy is congratulated, but when fat boy stops to catch his breath, society snickers while they eat the same snickers they banned him from eating. Fat boy hears the snickers, so fat boy goes back inside and fat boy looks in the mirror. We exchanged contact information and went on about our day. But the following morning, I got this in my email inbox. I didn't have the guts to tell you this at the gym, but I won't be going with you to see the Cubs on Sunday. It's not that I have a boyfriend or anything like that, and there's really no, no nice way to say it, so I'll just come right out with it. 
You're a fat pig. I don't want to judge you or anything like that, really. It's just, you know, I spend a lot of time focusing on my health and taking care of my body and just looking at you. I can tell that you don't. I can't stand when people tell me, well, just don't care what other people think. Or try being A or B or C or you don't really want to be friends with those people anyways. No, I want to go to gay bars. I want to go on gay vacations. I want to be invited to pool parties. I want to be on Grindr. Being a bear means that I am already a subcategory of a group that is small enough to begin with. And we as a group of people have to do our own part to have our own body neutrality movement. So instead of waiting around for someone else to do it, we need to go out there and actually fucking do something. So that boy realizes that society was right. That big is beautiful and thick thighs saved his life. Fat boy realizes that fat is strong. Fat boy realizes that fat is powerful because when fat boy walks across the room shaking it with every step that he takes, fat boy is mirroring God. Walking on the cloud shaking the earth with every step, fat boy is God on this earth. That boy is a tsunami rising from the ocean floor, colliding with the pain he has felt for so long. Forcing the world to see him. Forcing the world to see that that boy is human too. Aaron. When I am ready whenever you guys are. The stage is yours. Okay, perfect. So trigger warning, my speech does contain themes of sexual assault. Fear is marching next to the enemy but shooting at a stranger. Fear is a loaded barrel and not knowing who to kill. This is a war between your body and your country. I didn't join the military until I was 30. I wanted to show my son as the example of what my father showed me as a young girl. So I went to Italy for aviation administration and they saw I had experience and requested I take over that particular program, which I gladly accepted. The misogyny and the hazing started pretty much when I graduated from boot camp. I felt pretty much like a piece of meat in a butcher shop. One, strong emotions. When it happens, you will not understand why. You thought this only happened to the pair of vessel legs wobbling its way down the cement. To the girl who looks like confetti, drinking her rum, but not you. Not you. 
The U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs uses the term military sexual trauma, sometimes abbreviated MST, to describe sexual assault and sexual harassment while serving in the armed forces. As with any sexual trauma, the results of MST can be catastrophic to the mental and physical health of those affected. However, in the military, voices are often silenced or found that they are not welcome or heard. According to the New York Times on October 11, 2021, one in four service women have suffered from MST. This program is a tribute to those women so that their voices may be heard and find a home. Featuring selections from the oral interviews of Jane Doe, only identified as Jar Shell, and from Ruth Moore airing on Inside Edition in depth. Excerpts from the Military Sexual Trauma Fact Sheet and poems directives by Olivia Gatwood and Sharp Program Poem by Edward Wilson. Survivors from our military. There was a coworker and he was a real genuine friend and we invited him over to come and cook. The NCIS agents assured me we've never had this much evidence. They had the pictures of the lock that he maneuvered. He had his fingerprints on my broken zipper. They had his DNA inside my comforter. They had his DNA inside my rape kit. He has been living inside of his own pulse for months, ripping apart his pheromones, convincing himself that the man in the next cot might just feel like a woman if he closes his eyes and he reaches out his hand. You are the solution, darling, and doesn't that make you feel worse something? After the rape, I reported it to the chaplain, trying to get some help. I, uh, the chaplain told me, uh, you should uh, move on and forget about this. Little did I know, chaplain was uh, good friends with the uh, person who raped me. To difficulties with concentration. This is not a game of tattletale. This is a place where bad decisions are born. The question is how you deal with it. When this happens and you crack, you are not a victim. You are a liability. You are one step behind in the march. And most of all, you are a burden. I went upstairs to my room and I locked the door. So when I heard the voice of my coworker, I got scared. Right off, he actually tried to put his in my mouth and I just refused to open. I just shut my eyes and I closed my mouth really, really tight. It didn't matter to him. You will be discharged early with the salute of a soldier and a stomach like a knotted rope. Your uniform is a small dog nipping at your hemline. Your family will not know how to praise you and you will not try to teach them. Not you with your knotted bun and your taped down breaths. Three, difficulties with relationships. I felt like I strongly needed to end it. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. So I attempted to overdose. And I was sent off the island to Bassett, Maryland. But uh, <laughs> right before I was sent to Maryland, <laughs> I was put in the brig for attempted destruction of government property. <laughs> yeah, I was government property. <laughs> Those pants do not flaunt your pubic bone. That vest does not hug your waist. This is not a place to decorate yourself. And you thought you made all the right moves. 
but do not be fooled by your body armor. Do not think it will make you less desirable to these men. These men love it when you dress like this. When you smell like this. When you take a beautiful gift and wrap it in ugly paper like this. It is easy to hurt someone who looks just like you, especially when you hate yourself. As he was attempting to penetrate me, I heard my son knock on the door and the way that he ran to the door, I thought he was gonna. And instead, he told my son that he was taking care of me for trouble sleeping. When he doesn't know how to speak softly, remember he has been taught to bellow. When he uses his hand like the steel ram trying to get into the locked door, remember, he has been taught not to knock first. Remember, when he doesn't listen to the sound of your voice that he has forgotten, the sound of his wife's, how can you possibly blame an animal for its lack of table manners? The NCIS agents assured me, we've never had this much evidence. But he was still found not guilty. And the reasoning that I got, and I quote, it's no question that his genitals touched my genital area. But there's reason to believe that he believes he had fucked it. If you don't learn to control me, I'll continue to be the oasis of hate surrounding your ranks. I am the new age form of fratricide. I am the sum of division. And if you don't stick together and solve me, you'll never be able to defeat me. I am a combat minimizer. And until you learn to defeat me, you'll never be able to defeat your country's enemies. Now, let me tell you why she didn't report it. Ellen. Hello. Okay. And everyone's ready? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Soldiers 
in petticoats. Dauntless crusaders for women's votes, I do solemnly swear. Or a firm huh, feminazi that I will faithfully execute the office of the president of the bros before hoes. United States. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. How about this weather we're having? Very women belong in the kitchen. Temperate. As of September 2021, there are 26 women serving as heads of states or government in 24 countries. At the current rate, gender equality and the highest powers will be reached in 130 years. Harassment is not new for women in politics. And men face it too. But for women, the harassment is ubiquitous and frequently sexualized. Pardon me, pardon me. You've made it pretty clear that you don't think homemaking is important. Do you ever cook for your children? And where are they right now while you're out? God only knows where. Well, I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies and made teas. Okay. Take it easy. Let's not get emotional. What other traditions are you against? Baseball, hugging your children. How much did that haircut cost? The damage was done. When I was a freshman in high school, on the first day of school, I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, the president of the United States. And everyone laughed. Sadly for women in politics, laughter is only one of many things they face every day when running for office. In February of 2022, UNWomen.org shared that 82% of women parliamentarians reported having experienced some form of psychological violence. 65% have been subjected to sexist remarks by their own male colleagues. And 44% reported receiving death, rape, assault, or abduction threats towards them. Despite these barriers, women around the world have increasingly mobilized to name the problem of violence against women in politics, and in turn, to take steps to address it. So using articles from NBC, NPR, Indianapolis Star, Cambridge.org, and UNWomens.org, the poetry seat at the table by Eli Fiend, and When I Was a Little Girl by Becca Harris, the episodes from Parks and Rec, and the musical Mary Poppins, seat at the table a program because I grew up a little girl in awe of this nation's capital. Now, I'm terrified of it. When I was 11 years old, I unknowingly and accidentally became a female advocate. I remember I had been watching television in school when this commercial came on for dishwashing liquid. Women all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans. I remember two boys in my class saying, yeah, that's where women belong, in the kitchen. I remember feeling shocked and angry and hurt. Something needed to be done. In Bolivia, 70% of women had been victims of violence. Government was a real boys club back in the 70s. They smoked their cigars, they, they snapped my bra, they wore mirrors on their shoes to look up my skirt. I remember all the other councilmen used to keep a calendar of my menstrual cycle. I, I once tried to start a commission to get more jobs for women in city government, but they dismissed me. saying that it was because it was not time of the month. In Peru, 
41 percent of local female mayors have been victims of violence listen you did a great job getting it set up and getting the snacks together but we'll take it from here well councilman milton i did put the snacks together and they are delicious i must say but that is not the point this is my commission ouch why so ornery it's not the seventh yet no more than meek and mild subservience we we're fighting for our rights militantly. In southern Mexico, Alicia Zapata Lagunas was dragged to the town square and nearly hacked to death. Her house was burned down and her brother was killed. She, however, did not stop her activism. She fought and persevered and became the first female mayor of her municipality from Kensington to Billingsgate when here's the reckless crimes from every corner of the land womankind arise it is sad it is a sad day in which a member who leads a political party in the United States of America cannot bring themselves to saying that issuing a depiction of murdering another member of Congress is wrong is so hard. What is so hard about saying that this is wrong? This is not about me. This is not about Representative Gosar, but this is about what we are willing to accept. The illusion that this was just a joke. And the question I pose to the Congress is, will we live up to the promises we make our children? It's really that simple. Women need a seat at the table. They need an invitation to be seated there. And in cases where that is not possible, we must create our own table. We need a global understanding that we cannot effectively implement change without women's political participation. It is said that girls with dreams become women with vision. So let us empower each other to carry out such vision because it isn't enough to simply talk about equality. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. So let us work at it. Together starting now. Our daughter's daughter split to our eyes and they'll sing in grateful chorus. Well done, well done. Well done, Sister Suffragette. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. That I will defend, protect, and preserve the Constitution. Thank you.
يسميات Can everyone see and hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm actually having trouble um, pinning. Uh, give me a second. Okay, I'm ready. After centuries of individual and preliminary political struggle, women are uniting to achieve their final liberation from male supremacy. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was too busy watching sports and shotgunning beers. I'm a pretty typical tomboy. Also, I'm pretty. It's confusing, I know. People are always like, were you created in a lab? And I'm like, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. Kidding, I love humor. Nothing is funnier to me than a boy fart or saying pussy for no reason. And yeah, you can swear around me. I'm used to it because I grew up with a bunch of brothers. It was like so many brothers, but also a normal amount. Like 17? Does that sound right? After four years of Donald Trump, more than two years of a pandemic, and an unending right-wing onslaught, a lot of people with feminist sympathies are feeling numb and exhausted. People deep in reproductive justice struggles feel burnt out and taken for granted. People who have long organized direct action campaigns in response to every other political emergency have no faith for the capacity in a mass movement while the left is so weak. According to the take on October 4th, 2022, the feminist movement is in a crisis and energy for the movement has died out. Women have been openly ridiculed and disrespected by our political leaders. Women were disproportionately affected by COVID-19 job losses. Fewer women are being hired as a result of the Me Too movement. Much needed policies to support working mothers through family leave and subsidized childcare have failed to go anywhere in Congress. And Roe v. Wade overturned a landmark protection for women seeking abortions. Basically, 2023 is not an easy time to be a woman in America. As women, we make up 51% of the US population. And we are just asking for the bare minimum. So today, we will use the literature Red Stockings Manifesto by Red Stockings, Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn, I'm a Guy's Girl by Mia Mercano, and The Future Isn't Female Anymore by Michelle Goldberg. Because the world we live in is not safe for women. And we need to demand change. Women's submission is not the result of brainwashing, stupidity, or mental illness but a continual daily pressure from men. We do not need to change ourselves, but to change men. Our chief task at present is to develop a female class consciousness through shared experience and publicly exposing the sexist foundation of all our institutions. I've always been a guy's girl. I love meats and video games and how gasoline smells and how tires taste. You know, just dude stuff. I've never been into girly things like makeup or being culturally conditioning at my body. What even is bronzer or eyelashes? I don't understand why it takes girls so long to get ready. I put my human flesh on one leg at a time, just like one of the guys. Girls are always so jealous and sensitive about everything. I don't get that. I literally feel nothing except interest in whatever you like. But you know what they say, don't be a fucking tease like Lisa. That's a saying, right? I love sayings. Is no one gonna show you my basketball boobs? I mean, do you wanna play basketball? I'm such a guy, except I'm a girl. All the girls are like, why are we being pitted against one another for the gratification of the male gaze? Uh... 
but I'm like, because when we're against one another, our boobies touch and it's cool, duh. <sighs> Speaking of cool, another cool thing about me is that my butt is just for decoration and that's all. The vinyl feminist publishing scene is now mostly gone. Feministing closed a couple of years ago on one of the last holdouts, Bitch Magazine, a publication devoted to feminist pop culture criticism, is shuttering this month. Independent feminist publications are difficult to sustain financially, but that's not the only reason so many have disappeared. That type of earnest, identity-focused feminism has also grown out of style. <laughs> Men always say that as the defining compliment, don't they? She's a cool girl. Being a cool girl means I'm a hot, brilliant, funny woman who adores football, poker, dirty jokes, and burping, who plays video games, drinks cheap beer, loves threesomes and anal sex, and jams hot dogs and hamburgers into her mouth like she's hosting the world's biggest culinary gangbang, almost somehow maintaining a size two because cool girls above all are hot. Hot and understanding. Cool girl never gets angry. She only smiles in a chagrined, loving manner. Let's men do whatever they want. Go ahead. Shit on me. I don't mind. I'm the cool girl. Women are an oppressed class. Our oppression is total, affecting every facet of our lives. We are exploited as sex objects, breeders, domestic servants, and sheep labor. We are considered inferior beings whose only purpose is to enhance men's lives. Our humanity is denied. Our prescribed behavior is enforced by the threat of physical violence. Because we have lived so intimately with our oppressors in isolation from each other, we have been kept from seeing our personal suffering as a political condition. I thought I met a girl once, but she was just a maple syrup bottle. We sat across from one another in the kitchen and quietly kept each other company. Neither of us spoke because there were no boys in the room for us to fight over. I thought about bringing her to life in a lightning storm so that I'd have someone to listen to me. <laughs> That'd be selfish. I wasn't brought here to think only of myself. I was brought here to think only of myself in relation to men. There's more raw misogyny now. You can see it in the number of the accused, domestic abusers who Republicans have nominated, and the wave of new abortion bans that lack exemption for rape, incest, and the health of women. The triumphal right has taken the gloves off and is pursuing a scorched earth campaign against women's most fundamental rights. No more faux hand wringing about saving women from spinsterhood or post abortion syndrome. This is just lock her up. Social media magnifies anger, rewards trolls, and encourages conflicts to spiral. Men actually think this girl exists. Maybe they're fooled because so many women are willing to pretend to be this girl. I used to see men, friends, coworkers, strangers, giddy over these awful pretender women. I used to wanna sit these men down and calmly say, you are not dating a woman. You are dating a woman who has watched too many movies written by socially awkward men who would like to think this kind of woman exists and might kiss them. I'd want to grab the poor guy by his lapels or messenger bag and say, the bitch doesn't really love chili dogs that much. No one loves chili dogs that much. And the cool girls are even more pathetic. They're not pretending to be the woman they want to be. They're pretending to be the woman a man wants them to be. And if you're not a cool girl, I beg you not to believe your man doesn't want a cool girl. Maybe a slightly different version. Maybe he's vegetarian, so cool girl loves Satan and is great with dogs. Or maybe he's a hipster artist, so cool girl is a tattooed with spectacle nerd who loves comics. There are variations to the window dressing, but believe me, he wants cool girl. The girl who likes every fucking thing he does and doesn't ever complain. How do you know you're not a cool girl? Because he says things like, I like strong women. If he says that to you, he will at some point fuck someone else because I like strong women is code for, I hate strong women. We call on all our sisters to unite with us in struggle. 
We call on all men to give up their male privilege and support women's liberation in the interest of our own humanity and their own. In fighting for our liberation, we will always take the side of women against their oppressors. We will no longer ask what is revolutionary or reformist, only what is good for women. The time for individual skirmishes has passed. This time we are going all the way. And that's everybody. Thank you so much. Good luck. Best of luck. Thanks so much for judging. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.